P1. 375 units built, sold out. 675 LT, limited to 500 units, all sold. McLaren is known for its small production numbers. But after Ultimate and Super Series, now comes the Sport Series. With the 570S. Everything is different with this car. The 570S is the new competitor to the Porsche 911 Turbo. A super sports car for everyday use, but with an extravagant appearance. At McLaren, we have a total design process. And what we mean by this is design, engineering, aerodynamics, ergonomics, everyone works together. It's not that one person overrules the other. As a team, we work on the best product for the customer. To zoom into a detail, the key detail highlight would be the doors. I think when the doors are open, they really look like a piece of sculpture in their own right. Gullwing doors are a feast for the eyes. The raised edges draw the eyes right in. But the form of the 570S is much more than pure show effect. It is technically sophisticated to the last detail. The form follows function philosophy definitely applies to this car. The way we've used certain profiles to keep the air attached, sharp edges to detach the air. Uh, it really describes the way the air moves around the vehicle and that it's all for the reason and the functionality of cooling the car properly, the correct amount of downforce, and it's that combination that makes the car so fun and engaging to drive. The front fascia splits the airflow in four directions. Through the diffuser, it is directed to the front radiator. It continues to flow along the sides by the air intakes to the middle coolers and is then discharged through the so-called flying buttress, the freestanding C-pillar to the rear. The airflow over the tail generates additional downforce, just like the massive diffuser. Striking unique feature, the tail light signature. The 570S is marketed as the McLaren most suitable for everyday use. A lower sill thus allows entry into the clean interior, even without a sports badge. There has never been a cup holder, vanity mirror or compartment in the doors in a McLaren. Perhaps it is these details that make you feel good in the 570S. A lack of awe because you're sitting in an expensive sports car reduces the desire to drive off. Maybe the driving behavior also ensures for relaxation. In normal mode, the adaptive dampers are at their softest setting. Paving stones are still clearly felt, but there is no danger of damage to the suspension discs. The seven-speed dual-clutch transmission operates smoothly and imperceptibly. The 570 rolls effortlessly through the average residential area without acting like a hooligan. The enemy of all sports cars, speed bumps. If the front is too low, it only usually helps to drive very slowly in an angle over the obstacles. The technical solution, a front lift system. The front axle of the 570S is raised by 40 millimeters. The vehicle lowers again after it reaches 60 kilometers an hour. 
You could almost say that the 570S is suitable for city. It is, but it would be really immoral to imprison this car in the city, especially when you see this performance. The entry price of the McLaren, 181,750 euros. It is closing in from the back of the field. It stands all the way down at the bottom of the McLaren Sports Series dynasty, directly under the Super Series with the 650S and the 675LT, and quite far away from the Ultimate Series with the P1 and P1 GTR. But if 570 horsepower means entry, then that's damn sexy. And drive-wise, the baby McLaren is at the very front. Basically anyone can drive it, but compared to normal mode, the tuning in sport mode is uncompromising. Stiffer damper, quicker throttle response, fast changing times. The sports machine turns its racing genes now more outwardly facing, and that's really awesome. The steering is extremely direct, the torque presses one firmly into the seat from 5,000 revolutions. Standstill to 100 is achieved in 3.2 seconds. The road and the curved dynamics of the sports car are impressive. And the sound. I think Britishness now in the, in the modern era means for innovation, craftsmanship, uh, attention to detail and quality. And th these are things that are really dear to our hearts at McLaren. We have the pursuit of perfection and it's a vision really of just push, 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 and technology-based company, trying to really, really use that technology base, our Formula One knowledge, reflect that in the cars, and that's really our unique selling point compared to the competition. For years, McLaren has marketed itself as having Formula One technology for the road. In 1981, the English were the first F1 team to employ carbon, and this was later reflected in street models. Today, the 570S also benefits from this. The carbon monocell only weighs 75 kilos, and together with aluminum body parts, it expresses a curb weight of 1,300 kilos. Power to weight ratio, 2.3 kilograms per horsepower. And although the McLaren does not necessarily advertise it as a track tool, it is ideally equipped. The track mode unlocks the highest dynamic stage. Remarkably tight dampers, rapid throttle response, extremely fast gear changes, regulating technology intervenes less often, fun at the limit and drifts are allowed. The ESC can also be completely switched off. In addition, the so-called brake steer system pays off. This system, which is also used in Formula One, helps to align the vehicle's nose into curves by braking the inner rear wheel of the vehicle. Later braking action and early acceleration are thus made possible. Because this tool is on board, it shows that the 570 is absolutely ready for the track. The stated goal of McLaren, sales figures in the thousands. The chances are favorable that it will actually be used as a driving machine, and in future that it will also embellish its futuristic silhouette on the world's roads.